Hello, I'm John Maida, and I'm here with Deputy CTO of Microsoft, Sam Scalacci. Sam was just at Build. We have a video of the Build uh, stage where Sam talked about the open source semantic kernel, and you had a ladder on stage, Sam. It did. It did have a ladder on stage. We'll talk about that. So, uh, what I started my talk, what I what I started talking about was like I'm really like a consumer of AI models, not a producer of AI models. And like until very recently, everybody, you know, when you talked about AI developers, that's what you thought. And so that talk was all about like how to build applications and consume them. And the point of the latter was I really felt like, you know, for most of my career as a builder of applications, you know, like there was this cool like, you know, bookshelf of things that we moved through. And at the very top of the bookshelf in the candy store was this like really neatly wrapped things that were like conversation and meaning and natural language and, and intent, and we could never quite reach them. Like we've been kind of looking at them, you know, almost forever. And now we, a ladder showed up and ladders these like LLMs. And, and so now you can kind of get up there, which is pretty cool. Um, but like, you know, like everything else uh, on that bookshelf, as you go through those levels, you need new kinds of tools, and those tools often bring forward a new kind of engineering system and engineering approach. So like going from desktop to internet, I started off on the desktop. I sort of knew mainframes when I was in college and stuff like that. But when I started on the desktop, that was like waterfall, right? We had, we had you know, manual QA. We were putting stuff on physical media. It was a whole different you know, SQL databases on the disk. And we went to the internet and we had Agile, we had you know, NoSQL and things like that, and, and different regimes kind of emerged, and cloud begat things like CICD and those approaches. And I think the same thing's gonna be true of AI. So when I sat down as a developer, I thought, you know, this is really neat, but like this is just a function that like rearranges character arrays. It doesn't have any side effects, it doesn't have any callouts, it's stochastic and pure. It doesn't do anything other than just affect what you pass in essentially. So it's not really quite enough to build a whole program out of. And so we started to think about well, what do we really need? Well, just like in the examples before, you need state, you need a new database. Uh, that database um, has to be tuned to the task just like this last databases were for all every other shelf that we went through. You need flow, you need to be able to put functions and, and commands and things together and control flow in various ways and you need side effects. And these are all interesting and different in the world of these LLMs. Um, language and meaning need vector databases. You, it's, so, it's too difficult to build a schema for the whole world. Um, you know, we, we moved to no schema or no, no SQL for um, the internet because that scaled better. Um, that let us build these big distributed systems. I think we're now we're gonna start moving to vector databases because that lets us approach meaning better. And we built that into the kernel that we're, we're building. We need flow too, and for flow we looked at um, Linux, uh, Unix, right? Like that, that's a familiar pattern, having little commands that you can pipe things through, you know, in standard in, standard out, and variables. Um, but in this case, sometimes the commands are built out of code, and sometimes they're built out of language. Sometimes they're built out of prompts that have uh, prompt templates that have parameters that you can pass into them. And so that gets to be really interesting and you start to realize you can like use the model itself to do planning and move things around uh, and participate in the flow. So that's a whole new regime that's beginning to open up. And the last thing of course is side effects. Having callouts um, to native code means you can actually do things like page through a database and, and do stuff with it with the LLM or, or, or call out to other kinds of functions and services and stuff like that. And this is going to become, I think, increasingly important. And we're doing a whole lot of it with Microsoft. So those are the pieces um, that we talked about in the talk. State, flow, and side effects. Um, and those are, I think, the beginnings of the tools that you need uh, to get to actual um, you know, programs that involve and consume large language models. And later in the talk, we talked a bit about the engineering systems that go around it and how to do things like monitoring and QA and regression testing and stuff like that, which is also interesting. So that's what we talked about. Thanks, Sam. And this open source semantic kernel embodies this state flow side effects. And we're going to hear more about it in the next episode. Thank you so much, Sam. Awesome. Thanks, John.